Welcome back to the part two. Uh, that was a, a riveting first part, and then we're going to go straight into the um, second uh, second scenario. Um, if I can compose myself after that after that first portion. You're <laughs> okay. Uh, this second scenario reads: uh, Dear, it takes two. I met my fiance in the university, and although we are very fond of each other, our families unfortunately are not. My fiance is from Pakistan, and I am Arab. Can we still get married even if our families oppose this? Uh, brother Jay from Brixton. I think it depends on their age. Their ages, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay. If they if they are at a certain age where, um, again, from the Islamic point of view, they're considered to be Rashid, you know, or um, responsible um, mm -hmm. for themselves and um, capable of making responsible choices and judgments, mm -hmm. right? Then. Um, mm -hmm. There's not, there's, they, they, they're not bound by their families being opposed to it. If they are quite young, you know, um, let's say, for example, I don't know, first year university or something like that, you know, um, I think, yes, um, you know, family uh, consent is, is very important, father and what mother. A, what about when the family, uh, uh, their objections are, are lately inappropriate un-islamic yeah um <clears throat> yeah i think a lot of people are finding uh, having these problems mm -hmm. right I, again it's marrying across ethnic lines mm -hmm. okay and um, it's being opposed by the older generation because they are more insular than other people um i think that these this couple should try to get other responsible and influential people to speak on their behalf, you know, to their parents, you see, um, because again, within that particular cultural context, you know, they, they would be more ready to listen to uh, a sheikh, mm -hmm. you know, um, a doctor, you know, in the community and so forth, um, who could help shed light on this for them mm -hmm. and give the green light. Um, there is there is no criterion in Islam that says that you have to marry somebody from an ethnic group. Okay, mm -hmm. the criterion is is iman, is faith. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. not right. race or ethnicity and so on. And this is something I think they need to really emphasize to their parents. You know, show me why you object based upon faith, based upon the level of Islam of the person I I would like to get married to. Right? Not necessarily whether they can speak Urdu and they can't speak Arabic or they can speak Arabic and can't speak Urdu. Well, you it see? It could just be a cultural difference. There could be polar opposites. So, for example, if you're Middle Eastern and you're marrying someone who's European, they're not particularly going to adhere to the Middle Eastern customs and norms um, and protocols, for example. And um, it's the older generation, as you said, who have they're trying to still cling on to their culture. Mm -hmm. Doesn't necessarily mean that they have a bad intention, that it's racism. They're just trying to hold on to um, an affiliation they have with their own culture. But what can happen is uh, the young people can really approach their parents in such a negative way. You're a racist, mm. you don't understand. And that gets the older generations back up even more. Look, you're being disrespectful, you don't understand. They're not from, uh, they don't understand us, they'll never accept us. Um, so, I've, this is, sorry to cut, but I've heard this cultural argument mm -hmm. or, or, or reason, and I wonder oftentimes if this is just racism masquerading as something else. It depends people, on the individual. Sometimes people, um, like people who have racist ideas, especially as Muslims, it's not easy to reconcile that. So, there's a kind of a need to create a well, I'm, excuse, you know, I'm not racist, and that's not a problem. He's a lovely guy, and just this is okay. Me. But it's just a see, it's just a cultural aspect. He prays five times a day, and you know, Islam is key to me. He believes in the Quran, and that's at the center of my life too. So he's all these things that would would seem key, but it's just a cultural point. The term, you know, what would he cook? What she cook? The type of food that I'm used to as a daughter-in-law, or where well, he it could be racism. It could be it could be racism. It could be cultural preference. You know, at, at the end of the day, I call, but, but shake now. Cultural preferences for the person getting married. I'm wondering about the cult. You've had no, your no, marriage. No, no, why, no, why, why, no, why, no, why, no. Cultural preference for the parents. Well, hold on a the parents, the parents want 
for example. That's what I'm, I'm trying to challenge. Yeah, yeah, but it's, this is it's exactly the, it's, it. the, it's the couple's life. Yeah, yeah, it's a, but it's a parent. <laughs> it's a, yeah, 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 exactly. You prefer yeah. you yeah. marry that couple. may be feeling that they're trying to protect their children from a hardship in terms of if they have children who are mixed, what kind of identity are they going to have? Where do they fit in with the culture? Um, how is the community going to um, accept them? You know, how much do they keep all their culture? How don't? How much do they lose? Um, but we well, all our role models are Ahlul Bayt, though, and they, our they, role they, models they, are Ahlul Bayt, and there's the, the imams have mothers and from different nationalities. They do, but who follows everything that our imams have done? No, let's go. Let's 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 let's, let's get away from the Ahlul Bayt. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, what I'm saying, look, yeah. what you just said, okay, is exactly what the parents might be thinking. That's what I'm saying. But, Some parents. But they're not thinking as indigenous to this environment. They're thinking, they'll be thinking in this case as an ethnic subgroup, okay? An, mm -hmm. an isolated, insular, ethnic subgroup in the wider community. Mm -hmm. Whereas the, the two kids, right, the two individuals who are interested in getting, to mar getting married to each other, mm -hmm. okay, that ethnicity is not as important to them as their parents. It is important, it is important, but, but, but they are thinking in a more universal sense. We are Muslims, we are, I mean, we are attracted to each other, we want to get married, okay? Um, it is not as important to them whether that person they want to get married to comes from their own ethnic subgroup, mm. you see? But the parents don't because the parents are, are, are not thinking as people who are part of the society. Or carrying baggage yes, from what they exactly. may have faced um, or still facing in, the, in this environment. Yeah. I think we have to keep stressing and we have to be open about, there is racism in Islam. Um, Among for Muslims. Muslims. Amongst Muslims. Muslims. Muslims yeah. Yes. What? Okay, fine. <laughs> um, and we do need to address it and we need to look at ourselves first because many of us carry prejudices within us that we don't really feel comfortable as you said in voicing be it a different culture or a treatment that we had from a different culture or etc so um i think as the sheikh said get somebody in a position of um authority uh, an alem mm -hmm. and get them to speak to the parents because at the end of the day we're trying to please our law. we don't want a situation to happen where something an Islamic could um, occur because the parents put up such a fuss that it's led to them, God forbid, doing something that they shouldn't do. So I think it's important that the, the children also have to be respectful and understand that change is difficult for most people, especially if you're an older generation. Give them time to accept and stew on the idea, bring people in to kind of massage them with their feelings and what's going on. and but not be like, well, we're going to do this or, you know, to you're just being... Be just show, right, show patience, and patience because it's a merger of families at the end of the day. And if you have that, res um, that resistance this early, it will come out later, so... So, we, we, so we're speaking <coughs> to this, this uh, young couple or young brother that's written it, mm -hmm. but what about parents who may, who may be in a similar position to this uh, couple's parents? What kind of advice or, 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 or words would we, we want to share with them? Because they could be driving their kids away. Yeah. So, so how, how do we deal with this? The most important advice to, for them is this. Their children are not uh, the same cultural configuration as they are. Okay? Their children uh, belong to this society, right? The ones who are born here, the ones who grew up here, they belong to this society. And they share values of universalism. Human okay? Values, yeah. yeah, of universalism. Mm -hmm. They are not tied into the same kind of restricted ethnic type of identity that the parents have. Okay? They are they have they have friends in school and in their neighborhoods and so Neighbors. forth. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Who, who, Different dynamics yes, of the parents. Yeah, yeah. You see, right? And I think parents really need uh, to to unfortunately accept okay, mm -hmm. the fact that their cultural intensity will be diluted in their children, okay? Your kids are not gonna be as Pakistani or Iraqi as you. They'll be less so, mm -hmm. and their grandchildren even less so, mm. 
All right. This is the in, fluid, this is the inevit yeah, yeah. inevitability, all right, of cultural as, of, of, of of social assimilation. Mm -hmm. All right. If I leave here and I go and live among Eskimos for thirty years and I have kids there, you know what I mean. Yeah. I can't expect them to have, let's say, uh, a strong Caribbean identity like I have, for example. Mm -hmm. You see, uh, you know how strong it is. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, I can't expect them to do that. And so these parents have to recognize this. If you wanted Pakistani kids, you should have gone to Pakistan after five years or ten mm -hmm. years after you did your work. Right? If you wanted Iraqi, Iraqi kids in London, okay, you should have been in Baghdad by now. Okay, you know what I'm saying? They you don't know, be surprised by you don't be surprised, and you can't appear and you can't impose, you know, that narrow sort of a perspective on your kids here. I saw something really wonderful with my friend's mother. She's Nigerian, and she was having an 80th birthday. And everyone who was at her birthday party came from one part of the world. Her neighbors were Turkish, couldn't speak English, but they came to celebrate and eat food. Mm -hmm. She had Irish people, and she's 80, but just her, Is the way the she... the United Nations? It was, but it was beautiful because in her character, and she isn't even Muslim, but um, in her character, she incorporated other cultures, her neighbours, so it wasn't them and us, and, you know, I was there in full hijab and everything, oh, my daughter, how are you? And, and that, a lot of the time, we go back to people clump up with their ethnic groups and don't diversify and then when they have children or god uh, grandchildren they panic when the child says well actually i'm quite attracted to this culture or that culture i want to marry this person they're like what's happened well you've been in the country for how long and what have you done to to learn about other cultures or familiarize yourself with your neighbors and you know you have to they have to as the sheikh said take a share of responsibility here and it's not islamic racism is something disliked by um, Allah and we have to keep stressing this and we have to go deep and see what issues are we carrying mm -hmm. and what baggage are we putting on our children mm -hmm. because it's, it's, <laughs> it's a theme that keeps coming up in uh, whether it's to do with marriage or just different scenarios but it's a theme that comes up in society but in Muslim society I, I guess I find it more disturbing because we clearly know better I don't know if we clearly know better. I mean, for those parents, for example, okay, um, you know, I don't think they really know better. Uh, some of them probably do. Superficial. Okay, better. yeah, kind slogan, of like, yeah, slogan, yeah. Better. a slogan. Yeah. yeah, you know, I mean, I mean, for, for a lot of Muslims, right? A lot of Muslims in the, from the Islamic world, Islam is largely a, a cultural force, right? Rather than, let's say, for example, a problem-solving type of a thing. Okay, it is not something that is speculative. You know what I'm. You know, you, you, you pe people don't don't think about their religion in terms of, let's say, for example, meditate on the meaning of God and 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 and, 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 and why, for example, Islam is against homosexuality and you know things like that, right? They don't really do that. They just be. They just are. They just practice their religion the way their parents did, the way their aunties did in their neighborhood, and so on. You know. Um, they come to this country, uh, and a child becomes of age, and usually you marry your kids to your family. So you marry your kids to people back home, you know, that type of a thing. And they go through this type of a process. Whereas growing up as a Muslim in this environment, because there are so many challenges to Islam, okay, your Islam is thought out, right? Your Islam is something exactly out. right. You know, you know, kids and at university exactly. and the media and what's going on. Yeah. they have to. You see, yeah. and 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 because you have to think like that, okay. Automatically, you cannot fall into this kind of uh, keeping in step culturally type of Islam, because this is radically different to you conceptualizing your Islam and and and, and making it conscious in your lives. Mm -hmm. And it's not only limited to um, Islamic societies, you have it in the Jewish culture as well, how they treat Ethiopian Jews as opposed to um, European Jews. There's a lot of racism there. Baptist churches, how many Baptists are in, um, black Baptists are in um, big positions? This is a unit, racism is a universal cancer, I'm afraid, that, you know, goes in Hinduism.
are you light skin, are you dark skin, what caste are you in? You know, it, they have the same issues, my friend's Hindu. She can't marry someone who's of a lower caste. And uh, she's second generation But the caste English. system has no place in marriage, in a Muslim marriage. No, I'm talking she's Hindu. No, I'm talking about... <laughs> no, I know, but I'm using that word provocatively, that sometimes what Muslims are operating on is a car, as a type of caste system that is but we interfering know with this. people's romance. We know or this, but it's... marriage, should I say. Change is so slow in the human condition changes can be very slow we're not accepting it but we're opening the lid on it and we're saying we we see you and we're going to address it mm -hmm. but we need to take baby steps there's no point isolating a, a member of our communities who feel that way because no, what does that thing we must challenge and we must be thought-provoking but we must also be respectful and know that they've had their own journey everyone has a journey we're not condoning it but it's time to move on so, so what, what about from the young person's perspective if they say hey brother Bilal, so if my parents are racist can i just marry who i want then no you can't just do that that, that doesn't give you that um, that because it is uh, the kind of question that a young yeah, person will no, no, be thinking no, no. you have to take into consideration your parents sensitivities even though um you might think that they're misplaced okay so you require, you should, you should take gentle means of trying to convince them. And it might All right? take time. It might take time. I mean, one thing, for example, a person can do is, they want you to get married to, let's say, their cousin back home in Lahore. Right? You don't. You want to get married to X. You don't get married to anybody. After a while, right, they might concede. You see? Simple things like that. <coughs> Getting other authority figures to intercede on your behalf, to speak on your behalf. Okay. You know, things like that. Right? And also, again, the more integrated a society is, okay, the less problems like this we might find. And parents need to stop child, treating their child. children as if they're handbags or cattle, that they have a lifelong um, ownership of them. They need to allow them to have their own path and progress and develop. It's not because I brought you into this world, I tell you what to do. You marry who I want, you live where I want, you study what I tell you to study. I think parents need to also step back a bit because they had a chance to express themselves. Maybe they, they decided not to, but they need to give the youth a bit of breathing space. I, I hope this couple can find a way. I hope they don't it lead them to act irrationally or uh, you know, it drive more of a wedge between, yes. between, between them and their oh, parents. Yeah. Inshallah, we pray for uh, uh, the good, uh, a good Resolution, outcome. Resolution, yes. I believe that we've uh, come to the to the end of the show. It's been such a pleasure, Sheikh Hanif. It's, it's gone so quickly and Sister Ruby, uh, yeah. as always, uh, excellent. Informative. <laughs> Informative, excellent, dynamic. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's, it's been really um, excellent. And um, we thank you for staying with us for the duration of, of the program. Hope to see you next time when it takes two. Until next time, stay safe. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. some relationship advice? Do you have marital problems or questions? Perhaps you want to get married and you have questions for us. Please send your thoughts or questions to ittakes2 at sophiatv.com.